All right, folks, how you doing? And welcome to another video. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the Stream Deck XL and how I've set it up to work with Adobe Premiere Pro. So the Stream Deck XL is an 8x4, 34 programmable keys pad, and it enables you to control cameras, manage audio, use it for streams, and also to launch applications and that kind of thing. So if you're using OBS, Twitch, or YouTube live streaming, that kind of thing, it's great. But it's so much more than that when you hook it up to Adobe Premiere Pro to do editing with. All right, so because this is so programmable, if someone else was to do the same thing, it would look very different. But what we're talking about in this video is how I personally have set up my keys so that I can do editing on a Premiere Pro faster. So we'll look at the main setup that I've put together in the Stream Deck XL. And the way I've set it up is just one main screen and then which has 32 buttons on it and then one screen below, which is in what they call another folder below. So we'll take a really detailed look at the buttons that I've set up for editing in Premiere Pro. Currently the setup has just one screen. There's one folder below with some extra buttons in and then we go back up one level to have kind of some program launch buttons and that kind of thing. But the main screen we're talking about is my main editing screen for using the Excel for editing on Premiere Pro. All right, so let's look at the main screen for my editing and Premiere Pro setup on the Stream Deck Excel. On the main screen, you'll see in the top left-hand corner, there's a button to go up one level where there's some other keys for launching Adobe apps and that kind of thing. And back in the main screen, there is another button, which is a folder button to go down another level. And what that does on the Stream Deck is give you access to another 32 keys should you want to use them by going down another level. And the way to think about it is a almost a block of flats where you have different levels of flats, 32 flats on each level, and then you can have levels below that have more keys within them. So just a quick note about all the icons that I'm using within my setup. I made those using something called Font Awesome, which is a font that you can download. It's still free and you can use it for commercial purposes and also any of your own projects as well. If you're interested in those uh, in the icons, do let me know in the comments below and we'll sort something out to get them to you or some way to download them. So this folder button that I've got set up, you go down another level and there's just some buttons that I call non-essential keys, keys that I'm not using under my left hand all the time, but I can get to them by quickly pressing the folder button. Right, so what we're going to do now is go through the buttons one at a time. So that's 32 buttons. It's going to take a little while, but please do bear with me if you're interested in this, how I've got it set up. Button number one is up one level, we already talked about that, that's an easy one. And then number two is Control S, which is save. So you can obviously save from the keyboard. All of these things you can do from the keyboard, but of course the point about the Stream Deck is to set it up to make life as easy as possible. And I just wanted that split between two hands. So button number two is Control S, which is save. And then button number three is the folder icon, which we touched on just now. And as I've mentioned, this takes me down to the screen below. Button number four is the zoom out button and that's mapped to the period on the keyboard. All right, so next we're talking about some of the buttons the, that are mapped to the in and out markers. So number five is mapped to the in marker. Button number six is play with pre-roll and it's play with pre-roll to play from the beginning of the in out markers. Button number seven is used to mark the out point Button number eight is used to pull up the timeline screen or to focus on the timeline screen, also to make everything fit within the timeline. Now this is something I use quite often because when I'm working on one of the other panels and then I just want to jump to the timeline and bring everything in, that's a button that I press for that. Okay, down on the second row then, so button number nine, I've got set up for the projects panel and I find this quite useful if I'm working somewhere else, I can quickly pop on to the projects panel and look for other footage. If it's set up right, you can then kind of cycle between the folder and the footage as well. So that seems to work quite well. Key number 10 is to clear the IO points, the in out points, and that's a multi-action setup on the button. Key number 11 is Control Z, undo, which is a straightforward one, but that's nicely underneath the left hand. 12 is a simple one as well. Key 12, that is mapped to Alt. That saves coming back to the keyboard to press Alt. So key 13, I've got set up to go one frame to the left, and that's really quite useful when you're editing. When you made a cut, you want to go back a couple of frames and press play. Button 14, I have set up for ripple delete, which I think is normally mapped to D. Key 15 is cut, and that's mapped to Control X. So at the end of the second row, then key 16 is mapped to one frame to the right. And again, you can use this to fast forward by holding it down, it just goes a bit quicker, or you can incrementally step one frame at a time. The third row now then, and we have mapped to key 17 
is a hot switch to the effects panel. Right, so key 18, I have mapped to decrease the video row height in the timeline, and key 19 increases the row height in the video timeline. Key 20 is another simple one, just mapped to shift. And key 21, I've got mapped to link the clips, because sometimes what I do, I unlink the clips, do something to them, maybe move things around, and then I just want to link them back together again. And 22 is mapped to trim previous edit, which is Q. 23 is mapped to space, which is just play. So 24 is mapped to ripple trim to the right, which I believe is key W. Key 25 is mapped to the effects panel, which is shift seven. Key 26 is decrease audio row height, which is mapped to alt plus minus. Key 27 is mapped to audio row height increase, which is alt plus equals. 28 is another straightforward one, which is just control. Key 29 is mapped to unlink clips, which is before we had the rejoin clips, and this one is to break clips, so that basically you've got separate audio, separate video. So key 30 is to play the timeline from the beginning. Key 31, when you're in the preview screen, swaps between composite video and the audio waveform display. And then lastly on my main screen, there is the zoom in, which is mapped to shift seven. All right, so let's go down that other level and see what keys are there. Basically, the first two to seven keys are mapped to different colors. So this is just a very quick and easy way to recolor clips, uh, whether it's in the bin or whether it's on the timeline. It's just a dead simple way to say, I want that clip to be this color. Key number eight is quite an interesting one. What that does is delete any in out points. It focuses on the play screen and plays the timeline from the beginning. Key number nine is keyboard preferences. And what that does is open the key mapping screen for the keyboard. And that was one of the first things that I mapped because you have to keep checking to see what is mapped to where and then copy that across in terms of keystrokes to the Stream Deck XL. Number 10 is quite an interesting one. Sometimes you want to remove the attributes or some elements of the attributes to a particular clip. And what this does is open up the box to decide which ones of those elements you actually want to remove. Good time saver. Okay, key 14, I absolutely love this. Sometimes when you bring a image into the timeline, a photograph or a still or something like that, it doesn't fit the actual frame, because photographs tend to be that much bigger. It doesn't fit maybe the, the 1920, 1080, or the 4K, whatever you're doing. What this button does, you highlight the clip and press it, and it fits it to frame. Genius. So 18 and 19 are quite simple, kind of volume up and volume down. So if you've a audio clip or a combined clip uh, selected, you can use this to turn the volume up or down and it's preset to plus or minus six decibels. And that's quite a quick and easy way to change the volume of a clip. So keys 22 and 24, I've got mapped to be able to move to the beginning or to the end of a selected clip. Right, what we'll do now is jump over to a screen recording and show some of those things in action. So what I'm gonna try and do now is just basically go over to the screen and uh, do a little bit of kind of slicing and cutting and that kind of stuff with the keypad and you just get a gist of how I'm using that. If you're new to this, it might be interesting. If you're already using a stream deck and probably doing things a lot faster than what I am, it might not be interesting, but you know, good to have you around anyway. And thanks for staying for this bit. What we want to do is to bring down a bit of video we've got here. So what we want to do is to zoom into the timeline. So I would use these keys here for that. So I've got the two keys. The Basically, the audio and the video aren't high enough. That's what these keys are here. So let's just increase that. And that's the video channel. And now what we'll do is increase the audio channel. So that's great. So now we can start to see what we're doing with the timeline. Zoom in a little bit more. Good. All right, so we zoom out back from there. And so what we're going to do is pop open or just have a look at this bit of video here. Now, clearly that that isn't the right size. So what we need to do is pull up the, we're highlighted on that video there, pull up the effects panel. And so it's highlighted and we need to just bring that in. That, that's fine, we're happy with that. Let's go in a bit deeper into this one. Let's zoom into here. So let's zoom in and let's say we want to uh, cut on the, on the sound. So what we would do is maybe we can scroll across until we find a point that we want which is there, for example. And what we could do there is, uh, so highlight that clip, put a cut in the clip, and then we press play to move forward a little bit more and stop. And then we might wanna go back just a little bit. And of course we can hold that down and go back a bit more. And we're gonna pass the cut so we can go forwards again. And let's just say that that is where we want to 
make the cut, probably not the best of places. Cut that there. Oh, no. Undo. So we undo there. Cut that there. So we, the bit behind, we want to rip or delete away. That's that key. That's that done. Right, press play. I've just realized why there's a bit of a latency. It's because we're recording the screen. So let's zoom back out. There we go. Stop. Back to the beginning. Okay, and let's highlight this. And then we're going to mark the in and the out and stop. And now what this key does is play to the in and out with a pre-roll as well. So what we can do is make that loop and press play again. Okay, so now this is where we might actually make some changes to the sound. We've got that on loop, we might pull up audio, something like that, so that makes that much easier to do. Okay, so then stop, and we'll go back to the beginning by pressing that one and play. Now, did you see what happened there? So if I press play, and that's the same with, with shift space, when you've got in out points, shift space as well, and it goes to the in out points. Now that's what this key does here. If you watch that, Go back to the timeline, and that gets rid of the in-out points. And I've got that set to click twice. So the first click gets rid of the in-out points if I've got a preview playing in source. The second click gets rid of the in-out points in the timeline. So that works really, really well. I'm really pleased with that. That's quite a nice, quick little fix. Okay, so let's stop. Let's undo that. There we go, we've got the in-out points. And there they are, they're gone. Okay, so, and these buttons here, which you'd expect are the shift and alt keys. So how can we do that then? Let's have a go at doing that. So if we uh, hold shift and there, and then we can join these two clips together. So let's just click on them, they're now joined. Say I want to unjoin them again. It, did, it basically deletes the, uh, or breaks the connection with the audio. So then I can move that along and I can shift, select, join again. The clips now joined and I can move them as one, which is pretty cool, I love that. So now let's break those connections there, that's done. And Control Z, undo those there. So right, okay, let's do a bit more editing. So basically, let's cut, let's zoom in. Yeah, it does, definitely doesn't like the screen um, being rec recorded at the same time. We've got these keys here, so we can play and stop. Right, okay, let's do a little bit more and just show some of the cutting. So we can play to here, Stop, cut to the right, gone. Rewind, or well, we can do that with the mask. There we go, just there, that's where I want it. And now let's get to the right, rid of the rest, stuff to the right. So that really works really well. Okay, so let's pop this up into preview, and we can see there, we can press play. But let's connect that, and we'll press shift, hold that, join it together, and bring that up in the, in the so now it's got audio because I've connected it, I think. So now we can switch between the audio, the audio view and the composite uh, video view. So then these buttons here again, so across the buttons then, so we've got the, the control save, um, or the save, the folder goes down below, and this is quite useful, this is what I was talking about. So I can select this clip here, and then I can mark that as green. And then if I go back to the top, press project, and you can see which one is marked in green. So if I go back down here, go into the folder and mark that as yellow, and you can see that that's changed to yellow now. So it's just an easier way of actually assigning colors. While we're in here, let's have a look at what this does. So we can then go to the beginning of the clip, end of the clip, I like that. So we're playing music here. Let's go to right to the beginning, and we'll press play on the keyboard here. Okay, so there's not much music there, so we go forwards a bit, stop there. We're gonna show you the, the music volume going up and down. So with play, and we can use these keys to basically increase or decrease the volume on a clip, just by six decibels that does. So that's quite a nice funky way of actually doing that. I really like that. And so let's go back to there, press, um, this one to play the timeline from the beginning and stop it there, or basically stop it here. So we've got this clip highlighted here. Um, let's just break the link because we can. And what we might want to then do is to remove some attributes. So then that's what this key does here. That brings up remove 
some of the attributes there. So I might want to just take all the attributes away or, or just some of them, but that's that's what that does. So, and then this one I really like. This shows me, uh, let's join a few bits back together here because we should. And uh, what we'll do there, let's get rid of, uh, let's get rid of that ripple delete, bring the playhead to there and go to the end, end of the clip, which is that one and then go back up and we'll ripple delete the rest of the way from that. And that can go, cut, cut that away. There we go, right, so that's our clip. This is our finished movie. There we go, not much to that at all. Let's say we wanna actually watch that clip uh, in a kind of non-interrupted screen. So we go into the folder and we press this. So it's quite an interesting thing that happens there. What it does, if I stop that going, and if I go back, uh, back up and press play here. That, that We're now back in the usual sort of interface. But what this button does is close down all the other windows, opens up this play window and just puts a video in the center of the screen. It gets rid of all the in out points and then just presses play. So it's a reasonably uninterrupted view of the video. Right, okay, so look, I think that was a bit messy really, but I'll try and do a better one of those because it's the first time I've really sort of done something like that. So I'll, it just shows you sort of how I'm using the Stream Deck. I actually use it better than that when I'm ed editing, but it will have hopefully shown you uh, what I do uh, and how I've set the Stream Deck up. So look, hopefully that was useful. All the usual things, click, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz, and see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.